When we talk about building 3D environments and worlds, vegetation rarely sounds like the hardest part, especially nowadays. But in practice, trees and plants have been always a heavy workload, especially in the early days. A single detailed tree, modeled and textured by hand, could have taken days or weeks to finish. For open-world environments that needed thousands of them, the task became kind of overwhelming. The challenge wasn't only visual accuracy. Forests also had to be optimized to run smoothly on different hardware, which meant studios needed assets that looked convincing without dragging performance down. In the early 2000s, dedicated vegetation tools simply didn't exist, so artists either modeled trees in general-purpose software, such as Maya or Max, or they relied on in-house scripts that worked well enough for small projects but couldn't handle very big environments. So as demand grew, a gap opened for a more specialized approach, and this gap was filled by Speedtree, created by a company called Interactive Data Visualization. So how did they do it, and how it changed the VFX and game development industry for many years to come? Interactive Data Visualization, or IDV for short, was founded in the year 2000 by Chris King, Michael Seacrest, and Greg Croft. Their early projects involved visualization tools, but the growing demand for real-time vegetation in games and VFX quickly became the focus. By 2002, they had begun shaping Speedtree into a procedural toolkit built specifically for tree generation in interactive media. The principle behind Speedtree was kind of straightforward. Automate growth patterns while keeping manual control available. The software generated realistic branching systems using procedural rules, but the artist could still edit shapes by hand if needed. If a specific tree had to serve as a landmark or hero asset, branches could be adjusted manually without breaking the procedural logic of the rest. This balance made it possible to speed up production without removing the artist's input. And by 2003, the tool had entered game production. A major early success came with Bethesda's The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion in 2006. While the forests in that game were sometimes critiqued for repetition due to hardware limits, Speedtree was actually a breakthrough for making large-scale vegetation feasible, especially in open-world environments. A recurring problem with vegetation was repetition. Players quickly noticed when every tree in the forest looked identical, so Speedtree introduced variation systems that optimized parameters like trunk curves, branch spread, and leaf color. From a single base model, artists could generate thousands of distinct versions, which was a great leap forward. And this mattered in large-scale projects. The Witcher 3 combined Speedtree's variation features with handcrafted assets and custom art direction to build expansive wordlands. This procedural approach reduced obvious duplication, while bespoke assets ensured variety in important areas. The workflow also played a role in adoption. Speedtree introduced a node-based editor, where parameters like trunk height, branch density, and leaf scale could be adjusted through sliders, with results updating instantly. Artists could iterate quickly, test different looks, and still fine-tune assets when needed. Compared to sculpting every tree from scratch, the gain in efficiency was just enormous. Beyond asset creation, Speedtree tackled rendering challenges directly. Thousands of high-poly trees couldn't be drawn on screen at once, so a level of detailed systems were built in. Models were automatically simplified as they move away from the camera, with smooth cross fades to hide the transition. This kept performance consistent even in dense forests. Another feature that was pioneered by Realtree was real-time wind animation. Using the combination of vertex animation, hierarchical motion, and shader-based techniques, Speedtree simulated branch sway and leaf flutter. The movement was subtle but effective, at an atmosphere with manageable performance costs. Games like The Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima used this to bring environments to life, with natural motion built directly into the assets. Documentation from Epic notes how Speedtree assets could be imported into Unreal with extra vertex attributes that handled wind and NLD out of the box. Developers didn't need to script custom systems. They could drop assets and focus on level design 
which is great. This was actually a key part of the appeal. It wasn't only faster to build trees, it also ensured those trees behaved correctly inside a game engine. Adoption also came from how easily speech tree fit into existing workflows. Prominent integration began with Unreal Engine 3 in the mid-2000s, and support has continued ever since. Unity added official support as well, letting artists paint speech tree assets directly onto terrains. The co-founders often emphasized the ready-to-use approach. As you can imagine, wind, LODs, and shaders all worked without extra setup, so developers didn't need to reinvent vegetation pipelines. For studios running proprietary engines, the company behind Speedtree offered an SDK that let teams bring Speedtree generation and rendering modules into their own frameworks. This meant one thing. Flexibility made it useful across both blockbuster and independent projects, especially after subscription licensing lowered the entry cost. By the 2010s, Speedtree had become embedded in AAA productions. Ubisoft used it for the wilderness of Assassin's Creed, Guerrilla for Horizon Zero Dawn, and Infinity Ward for Call of Duty Warzone. The consistency across genres kinda highlighted its value and made everyone believe that this is one of the best solutions if you want to create lots of trees and vegetations in video game development. The VFX industry embraced it too. A version of Speedtree tailored to VFX contributed to productions like Avatar, and in 2015, the software received a scientific and technical academy award for advancing digital foliage. This recognition actually reflected its role not only in video game development, but also in the visual effects industry. While other procedural tools appeared, none actually matched Speedtree's mix when it came to procedural modeling, direct editing, built-in performance features, and game engine integration. So developers openly acknowledged its dominance, and by this stage, it became the industry standard. And here is the interesting thing. The importance of Speedtree eventually drew interest from game engine makers. So in October 2021, Unity Technologies acquired IDV. For Unity, the acquisition meant tighter integration of vegetation tools inside their ecosystems, which means the Unity game engine. And for the company behind Speedtree, it provided stability and broader visibility, because now everyone can use it. But despite its acquisition, Speedtree actually continued to be a standalone product with full support for Unreal and custom engines. And I think this is natural because the software has become embedded in the fabric of game development industry, and taking it away from developers kind of looks like a crime, to be honest. Also, it is beneficial financially for Unity Technologies to keep selling it to all game developers, which kind of makes sense, I think. So its role as a cross-platform software hasn't changed. To the contrary, this deal confirmed its place as a very important software in creating digital environments. Even with this widespread, Speedtree kind of remains invisible, at least to those who don't know the development side of things, because credits rarely mention it, and even reviews don't bring it up. Yet, its influence is actually everywhere. Forests of Oblivion, the fields of Ghost of Tsushima, and the jungles of Far Cry all carry its signature, whether people know it or not. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.